what condition is the explanation a construction worker very keyword guys construction worker worsening shortness of breath several months left pleuritic chest pain for two weeks he does not have fever cough night sweats wheezing or smoking he was diagnosed with hypertension and start of amlodipine 10 days back that could be important he has been working in construction for the last 25 years and before that he worked in a ship dry dock for 15 years that keyword for asbestos on physical exam you'll see bilateral clubbing and crackles at the lung bases when you study um, interstitial lung diseases like this you'll see that some affect the bases and some affect the apex and right now I just want to confirm in my mind asbestos affects the bases and yes, it does. Chest x-ray reveals infiltrates in lung bases again. Okay, this is really important right here. Increased ratio. Now, this if it's increased, it's restrictive. And I know that asbestos is falls under restrictive. So, so far, that's all making sense. Right, that would be decreased. Pleural scarring, that does happen in asbestosis. What condition is the explanation? There is my choice, but I want to make sure that I go through these. Drug-induced interstitial lung disease. He was put on a drug, amlodipine, but only 10 days ago. I don't think uh, amlodipine could really cause anything like that to happen in just 10 days. And plus, this has been going on for a while, several months. Because of that, I'm ruling that out. Sarcoidosis. More common in African-American women uh, involves many other characteristic keywords, so especially granulomas. So they haven't mentioned any of that. I'm ruling that out. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Nothing was mentioned about IgE levels or any type of allergy. I'm ruling that one out. Tuberculosis. Where was it? They said something about night sweats in negative history. So because of that, I'm ruling that out and going with my primary choice. Yes. Next one. Um, so there's altered metabolism of a particular amino acid causing a this patient's presentation. So let's go through this. 55-year-old male. He's had a lot and many episodes of diarrhea two months it's been going on for a while no fever or abdominal pain uh, diarrhea is getting worse even though he's been using over-the-counter medications um, okay multiple episodes of burning sensation in his neck and upper chest associated with redness and flushing of his face that's all I needed to know honestly flushing of his face and diarrhea like really uh, common keywords for carcinoid syndrome. So I have that in mind now. He has hypertension and dyslipidemia. That's his medication. Blood pressure, okay, all right. Nothing significant there. Digital rectal exam, no. Blood in the rectal vault, okay, fine. Um, Holocystolic murmur, this is again hinting towards carcinoid syndrome. Intensity with inspiration, right heart that's hinting at a right heart type involvement and I know that um, sorry I just tried to be OCD there <laughs> I know that um, uh, carcinoid syndrome affects the right heart more than it does the left because of the metabolism of it in the lungs um, I'm not gonna get into that this isn't a teaching video um, this is just to show how I answer the questions and how you should be thinking about it okay so the alter metabolism of what amino acid is going to cause this and I know it's serotonin but serotonin comes from one of these phenylalanine would lead to PKU that's something different altogether tryptophan yes I know that does it's a precursor of serotonin I, I want to answer that this is my choice but let me see the rest homocysteine no that's involved in homocysteinuria and they would have joint or skin issues um, coagulation issues and lens dislocation in a downwards fashion 
Uh, arginine, that sounds like it would be involved in a urea cycle, not involved here. Glycine, not at all. This is serotonin involved in tryptophan metabolism. Ah, oh, what is it with the long questions? Okay, um, what's this patient has increased creatinine, and what's the cause for this? All right, if you want, you can speed things up, look at these, have a few things in mind. Up to you, it's all personal preference. Um, he's 52, male, three weeks history of abdominal distension, yellow coloring of skin, dark urine. All right, sounds like it's affecting the liver, but let's see. Uh, malaise, shortness of breath. All right. I think that's important here. Uh, he's been drinking a lot. Uh, diagnosed with cirrhosis two years ago. They warned him to stop drinking, but he didn't. All right. Dyspnea, polypnea. Skin and sclera jaundiced, yep. Okay, uh, Adsman has distension, okay. Okay, liver is palpated. It doesn't matter how many centimeters, nine, 10, eight, whatever. As long as the liver is palpated, you know it's enlarged, okay? The legs show significant edema. CT scans show cirrhosis, poor hypertension, all right. Oliguria, it's affecting the kidneys, it looks like, and maybe ammonia is building up, but do we need to think about all that? Let's just see. All right. Increased creatinine, what could be causing that? Um, sometimes you won't need to look at this. Let's just see if we could find the answer right now. Um, ATN, no. I'm thinking of all the stages of ATN and what could cause it. He's not had any injury or anything that could lead to that. Chronic kidney disease. Yeah, that could lead to increased creatinine. But is it right? Is it this patient? I don't think so. And they're not mentioning anything about, let's see, they're not mentioning anything about PTH, calcium levels, acidosis type of stuff you would see in chronic kidney disease. Glomerulonephritis, mm, I don't think so. To really confirm that it's not that, I would probably look here for something, urinalysis, I would look for right WCRBC, not that significant. So because of that, I'm ruling that one out. Hepatorenal syndrome, now we're getting somewhere. That sounds like it could be the right answer. Pyelonephritis, no, this is not acute. It's going on for a while. He doesn't have fever. It's affecting the liver. And I, and you guys have studied about hepatorenal syndrome. I remember it uh, leads to dyspnea and breathing problems as well. So because of that, I'm gonna go with that. And do go through and read why you got it right. Even if you knew the answer, there'll be stuff in here that, that will help you. Take your time going through the question banks. What changes would be seen in the patient's heart? All right. 68 year old male. Okay, he wakes up in the middle of the night feeling out of breath. Three or more pillows. Okay, we know what that means. Mm, okay, breathlessness, minor tasks, dressing in the mornings. Okay, vitals seem okay. All right, here we go. We're getting somewhere. S4 gallop. You know, this is very important. S3 would mean um, that there's increased volume, like maybe more blood volume. S4 means that the heart is actually physically enlarging or thickening. And it, because of that, obviously, there'll be a laterally displaced pulse maximum intensity. All right. He also has hypodrugular reflux, orthopnea, yes, and severe lower limb edema. What changes will be seen in the heart? Okay, so he's having heart failure and he's having, like his heart is enlarging. So let's go through these. Um, increased nitric oxide. I would think nit nitric oxide would be decreased because nitric oxide acts normally to dilate um, the vessels. And uh, 
this case it doesn't sound like that because it's hypertrophy and having heart failure and breathlessness. Um, decreased collagen. Obviously collagen should be increased if the heart's getting thicker. Decreased expression of metalloproteinases. This would be involved with collagen, so it would be increased, I believe. Increased production of angiotensin II. Well, hey, I know angiotensin II is normally made in the heart, so would it be increased? That makes sense. That fits this. If the heart's being stimulated and stretched and enlarging, of course it's going to increase production of whatever else is going on there. Um, but let's see what else. Cardiomyocyte hyperplasia. Well, that sounds right, doesn't it? The heart's getting bigger, but slow down. And think about it. Hyperplasia or hypertrophy? What happens in the heart? If you can't really remember, try to remember other things that could link towards this. Like when I when I say that, I mean, I'm thinking about hokum. And I know the first letter in that stands for hypertrophic, hypertrophy. So that's again solidifying to me that the heart undergoes hypertrophy not hyperplasia so let's get rid of that and we're left with this and this is a pathophysiology question so it does pay to uh, go over the normal pathways and why this would be right and that is right all right without further ado let's jump to the last question here what is the mechanism of action of this drug pharmacology they're giving a drug what's the mechanism of action 25 year old Caucasian man. Okay, left side abdominal cramping with bloody diarrhea. So it sounds like it's ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, maybe. He lost some weight, yes, obviously. Okay, temperature. Mild tenderness in the lower left abdominal quadrant. Bowel movements, okay. Anemia and thrombocytopenia. Endoscopy shows, okay, there's the diagnosis. So they treat him with the first line agent for this condition. What's the mechanism of action of that? So I'm thinking of the treatment for ulcerative colitis, and I know some are sulfasalazine, TNF alpha inhibitors, steroids. Um, I believe uh, sulfasalazine is a first line, and it's what I've thought of first. Um, so let's go through this. Inhibition of leukotriene and lipooxygenase. Honestly, that sounds like it's sulfasalazine. I'll leave that there. TNF alpha, yes, that could be used in this. But is it first line is what's important. So no, I don't think it is. So we want to suppress cellular and humoral immunity. That sounds like it could be cyclosporine or some type of immunomodulator. Um, I believe that could be used in ulcerative colitis, but not as first line though. So because of that, I'm ruling that one out. Inhibition of enzyme phospholipase A2, so that's steroids. Yeah, steroids can be used in that, but it's not first line though. So because of that, let's rule that out. Cross linking. That sounds like not even involved. That's like anti-cancer drug. And we're left with that. Let's go with that one. So that's it guys. You're awesome. You've watched this far. I know that you're going to tackle step one because you are dedicated. I can tell because you've watched this far in the video. Great job. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please like it. It helps me a lot. And um, post in the comments if you want to see another video like this. Alright guys, thanks for watching.